Nobody believes there is a so-called right to secession, but it is a very legitimate uh, issue to debate because all the, the states that came into the Union before the Civil War believed they had a right to secede. And New England in the early part of the 19th century actually considered it, and nobody questioned them about whether they had the right to do it or not. Since the Civil War, uh, it's been sort of a dead issue, but he brought it up. It stirred the media, and believe me, it really stirred some of the liberal media where they started really screaming about what is going on here. Uh, this is un-American. I saw, heard one indiv individual say, uh, this is treasonous to even talk about it. Well, uh, they don't know their history very well because uh, if they think about it, it's an American tradition. It's very American to talk about secession. That's how we came into being. Thirteen colonies seceded from the British and uh, established a new country. So secession is a very much of an American principle. What about all the strong endorsements we, we have given over the past decade or two of those republics that seceded from the Soviet system? We were delighted with this. We never said, oh no, secession is treasonous. No, secession is a good principle. Just think of the benefits that would have come over these last 230 some years if the principle of secession had existed. That means the federal government would always have been restrained not to overburden the states with too much federalism, too many federal rules and regulations. But since that was all wiped out with the Civil War, the states, uh, the federal government has grown by leaps and bounds, and uh, we have uh, suffered the, the, uh, the consequences. And we need to reconsider this. We should think about it. It's not un-American to think about uh, the possibility of secession. This is something that is voluntary. Uh, we came together voluntarily. A free society means you can dissolve it voluntarily. That's what the whole issue uh, was about. Just remember one of the reasons that Wilson drove us in unnecessarily into World War I. He talked about, well, we have to give, uh, have every country in the world the benefit of self-determination, a good principle. Of course, I don't think he really believed that, but self-determination is, is a good principle. It's a very American principle. So to me, it's a shame that we can't uh, discuss this. You know, it's interesting that uh, so many of us have been taught for so many years, and as long as I can remember from first grade on up, taking uh, the Pledge of Allegiance that we have a republic that's indivisible. And we have been preached at and preached it. So therefore, there is no contest, no question since the Civil War that uh, uh, we have even the thought that this uh, could happen. But you know what a lot of people don't talk about and they really don't even know about is who wrote the, deck, who wrote the Pledge to the Flag. The Pledge to the Flag came from Francis Bellamy, an, a, an avowed socialist who wanted to put into concrete in, uh, in the pledge, this principle of, of being indivis indivisible. And uh, it, he did it, you know, for the celebration, ironically, 400 years of the celebration of the uh, landing of Christopher Columbus. So it was in, in 1892. I mean, the Pledge for Pleasure of Allegiance has not been here, you know, uh, all, our, all our history. So I, I think it's, it's worth a discussion. I think people should discuss this because right now the American people are sick and tired of it all. And I think the time will come when people will consider it much more seriously is when the federal government can no longer deliver. That time will come when the dollar collapses. No matter what they do and how many promises they have and how many bailouts they have, they can't do it if the money doesn't work. So then the independence of the states will come back, and it doesn't mean that you'll be un-American to even contemplate what might have to be done once the dollar crashes.